What's going on guys? So I hope everybody had a happy new year and hopefully we have a better 2021 than we did 2020. So in this video I want to create a, a really cool looking landing page for I guess like a travel agency, travel website. And we're basically just doing this part here which has a, a, a really nice video background with an overlay, some nice text, uh, some social media icons down here with some effects on the buttons and icons. Uh, and then we have a menu button here. If I click, it opens a side menu. Now, I'm not going to do any of the inner pages. Feel free to add those yourself. Or if you want to add more content down below, like some cards and so on. I think it's a good boilerplate for um, for a really cool looking website. And of course, you can change up the video. It is responsive. If I make this smaller, see, it still looks good. Menu still functions. Um, so we're going to go ahead and build this. So uh, in this video that I'm using is from Pexels. This is the actual video. So you can see we do have a, a nice overlay that really makes it pop, makes it really bright. Uh, but I'll, I'll have um, a code pen link in the description with all the code, with the video link, with the images and so on. So I'm going to jump into VS Code and you can see I have a few things. I have the video, the MP4. I have the images. So we have the regular menu icon here or menu image, the close image. And then we have the social media icon. So I'm not using font awesome or anything. You can if you want, but we're just going to be using images. Now, the, the only two things we need to create here are index.html, sorry, HTML page. And then we need our CSS. So let's do style.css. And in our index HTML, I'm going to use Emmet within VS Code by doing exclamation enter. And then we'll go ahead and tab to the title and let's call this travel. Uh, we'll just call this travel landing page. And then right above that, I'm going to put in a link tag and I want to link my style CSS. Now, in the body here, I'm just going to do the HTML real quick because there's not really that much. Most of this is going to be CSS. And when we get to the styling, I'll go ahead and make the make the browser. I'll split the browser and the editor so we can see both at the same time. But let's just do this real quick. So basically everything is going to be in a section with a class of showcase, except for the menu, the menu that slides open. Um, so in the showcase, we want to have a header. That's where we're going to have the logo. So an H2, give it a class of logo. We'll say travel and then a class a div with the class of toggle, which will change depending on the state of the menu. It'll either be a hamburger menu or a close button. And then underneath the header, actually, let's save this and open it up. So you can just open the the index HTML on your file system or you if you're using VS Code, you can use live server, which is what I'm doing. So I'll say open with live server. And that's going to open it on my local host. All right, so let's jump back in here and underneath the header, we're going to put the video. So I'm going to use the HTML5 video tag. The source is going to be the location of the file, which is right in our root called explore.mp4. And then I'm going to add some attributes here. So the first one is going to be muted to make sure that it's muted and you can use any video you want. It doesn't have to be this video. I'm going to say loop so that it keeps playing over and over and then autoplay so it plays automatically when we visit the website. All right, so it's going to look like this right now. Uh, now under the video, we're going to have a div with the class of overlay and that's we're not going to put anything in here, but we're going to style it to have that bright overlay over the video. And then underneath that we'll have our text. So I'll have a class of text and first is going to be an H2. We'll say never stop. And then in the H3 underneath, we'll say exploring the world. And then I, I'm going to have a paragraph with just 20, uh, 20 words of dummy text. So we can do lorem 20 enter with Emmet and that'll give us this text here. And underneath the paragraph, we'll just have a link. It's not actually going to go anywhere, but we'll say explore. And we're going to style that as a to look like a button. Now underneath the div with the class of text, we'll have a UL with the class of social. And these are going to be our social media icons, which will be in link, uh, not links, LI tags and inside an image. So an IMG tag with a source of this one will be Facebook dot PNG. Copy this down and this one Twitter. And this one Instagram. OK, so that's that. Now underneath the section is where the menu is going to go, the menu that we're going to have slide open. So this will have a class of menu and inside that class will have a UL with some list items and a link. 
and this will be home and then I'm just going to copy that down a couple times so we have a home let's say news let's say destination you can say whatever you want here and of course you can create these pages if you want blog and contact all right so that's it for the HTML if I save that and we check it out everything is just you know position static in in the layout so that we from top to bottom we have the logo the video the text the social media the menu so now we want to go ahead and style this so I'm gonna make this a little smaller so we can fit this on the in the you know on the screen and jump into our style sheet now I do want to use the Poppins font um, so I'm gonna go and uh, open up fonts.google.com let me just separate this and we're gonna search for Poppins all right so we'll click here and I'm gonna choose a bunch of these styles a bunch of these font weights so I want extra light 200 select light 300 regular 400 medium 500 uh, semi bold 600 bold 700 and finally extra bold 800 so we're gonna select all those styles and then here you can either put these links in your HTML or what I'm gonna do is the import so I'll go ahead and copy this here everything in the style tags and we can then just put that right in our style sheet okay so we're importing the Poppins font with these weights and now we can continue on with our styling so I'm gonna use the universal selector which is an asterisk basically for a reset saying I want to select everything and I want to zero out the margin and padding so take take that off of everything if I save you can see now there's no margin or padding on anything I also want to set the box sizing property to border box so that if we add any borders or padding it doesn't affect the overall size of the element and then finally let's put our font family in here and that's going to be Poppins and we just want to add sans serif all right so you can see this text looks much much better so let's do the showcase which which is basically wraps around everything except for the menu so showcase and what we'll do is position this absolute and say we want this to be from zero from the right so it's going to basically be you know zero from the right over here and span a width of 100 percent and then we also want the let's say minimum height to be 100 VH which is a viewport height if I save that you'll see that the showcase everything is positioned absolute um, except for the menu which is behind everything so just kind of a, a ignore the menu for now in fact we can go ahead and just for now let's um, let's display none for the menu and then I'm also going to just comment out the video because it's kind of messing with me, the movement. So I'm going to comment that out. All right, so it should look like this. Now, for the rest of the showcase here, let's, um, let's add padding, 100 pixels. So everything we, we're looking at right now is in the showcase. So padding 100 pixels. I'm going to display flex so that I can align some of these elements now when I display flex automatically it puts it into a row we have in the showcase three main item, three main elements we have the header we have the text and we have social so those are going to be in a row uh, but we're going to be positioning the header and the social icons absolute so that they're not going to stay in this you know in this alignment um, what I do want to do is add justify content to space between so everything between these these three main elements you'll see the space is distributed in between those and then I want everything in the middle going you know vertically so with flexbox we can do align items and we'll align it to the center okay so everything's in the middle uh, let's see what else do we want to do here let's set the background of the showcase to a dark color and we'll set the color to white and then I'm also going to add a Z index and set that to two so that it's always in front of the menu. All right. So if I get rid of this display none now for the menu, we still can't see it because we set this Z index. If I set this to a lower number like negative two, then the menu is going to be on top. All right. So we want to keep that set to two and we, we no longer need display none. 
All right, now let's see what else do we want to do here. So we'll leave the showcase for now. Later on, we're going to make it so uh, when the menu is active, the showcase slides over, but we'll get to that a little later. Let's deal with the header right now, which is in this flex row at the moment. So right underneath showcase, let's say showcase header. Uh, but before we do that, I actually want to do the toggles. So let's say showcase. Actually, we don't even need that. We'll just do class toggle. All right. So for the toggle, uh, we're going to want to show the, the menu button. But first, I would just want to make sure this is positioned relative within the header. And then let's set a width and a height to we'll do 60 pixels. Width and height. And then we want to add the background image. So we'll just say background. We want to set it to a URL, set it to the menu dot PNG. If I save that, we can see it right here. Now it's it's repeating. So I'm going to add the background repeat. No repeat. Okay, that gets rid of that. Uh, I'm also going to set the background size. I'm going to set that to a lower pixel. We'll do 30 pixels and let's center it within the toggle. So we'll say background dash position and oh, just position and set that to center. Okay, and then I also want to just set the cursor, <coughs> excuse me, to be a pointer. All right, so now that we can see the we have the logo and we also have the toggle, let's go back up to the header and style that. So I'm going to position this absolute which is going to kind of take it out of that that flex box uh, alignment. And we want to position it from the top 0 and from the left 0. So we're basically just putting it in the top left corner. We want to make sure it spans across 100% and then we're going to uh add some padding. Oops. So we'll do 40 pixels top and bottom and then 100 pixels on the left and right. Okay, it's going to bring it in a little bit and then let's give it a Z index. We want to make sure this is on top. I'm going to give it a really high Z index, we'll say 1000. And then for the display. So I obviously we want, you know, the logo on this side, the menu button on this side. So we're going to use flex. As soon as I do display flex, it'll put them side by side. Now to align them vertically this way so that they match up, we're going to use justify. Uh, I'm sorry, align items. If it was a row, I mean, if it was a column, we would use justify content. So align items is going to be vertical, which we want to be center. And then justify content is going to be horizontal. Now we want to take the remaining space here and put it in between the two so that this is over on the right. So we want to set this to space between. and that'll push that over. Okay, regardless of, you know, how wide or, or small this is. So that takes care of the header. Um actually for the logo let's say for the logo uh, I just want a text transform which is going to I'm going to set it to uppercase and let's set the cursor to a pointer for that as well. All right, now next thing uh should we do the active? Yeah, let's do the the um the button here, the toggle. So, if the toggle has a class of active, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to add that manually right now. Later on, we're going to add it with JavaScript so that when we click, we have an event that adds a class of active, but for now, I'm just going to put it in there. Put that on the toggle. And then we'll go right below here and say toggle if it has a class of active don't put a space here if you put a if you put a space like this it means you're looking for a, an element inside of toggle with a class of active if we don't put a space we're looking for the class of active on the toggle okay so big difference now in here um i'm going to just copy these background properties and we're going to change this to our close button and then i'm also going to make it a little smaller make it 25 pixels and save and now notice that it's showing the close button. Okay? Now I'm going to take that active class off and save and now it's back to its original. 
All right, so now let's do the video. The menu is actually the last thing we're going to do. Um, so yeah, we can actually get rid of that for now. So let's do the video. I have a comment it out right now, I'll uncomment it. And we want the video to be, you know, completely full screen. So let's target uh, showcase video. And we want to position that to be absolute. And then I'm going to position it at the top left corner. So top zero left zero. We want it to span a width of 100% as well as the height of 100%. Now, you can see we have the entire video showing which we want, but we don't want this the space above and below. So we're going to use object fit and we want to cover. Okay, so that's going to try to dis display the whole video, but not have that space. And that's what we want. All right. Now, uh, the last thing I want to do is just add a little bit of opacity or take away some opacity. I should say one is default. That means it's not translucent. It's not see through. So let's set it to 0.8, which is just a little translucent. Now, the text is uh, the header is on top of the video, but the text is actually behind it. And the reason for that is the header. We, we put that thousand Z index on. Where is it right here? So that puts it on top for the text. Before we do the overlay, I'm just going to add for the text. Let's uh, let's just position this relative and let's set a Z index of something higher than two, because I believe we set the what we set the showcase to two. So we'll set that to 10. And now the text is on top. Now for the overlay. So the overlay, we just want to kind of place over everything just like we did with the video. So I'm going to copy all of this because we want it to position absolute. We want it to start at the top left, span everything, you know, going vertical, horizontal. And then I want to add a background color. Uh, so let's say background. And we're going to use a hexadecimal value of 03A 9F4, which is a light blue. Now, if I save that, you'll see we no, we no longer see the video because this is covering it. Um, now, there's a few ways to handle this. The way that I've done this for a long time is instead of using a hexadecimal, you guys don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. I could use an RGBA, which is red, green, blue, alpha. So we could do zero for red, green, blue, which gives us black or we could use any color. And the alpha is the transparency. So I could do like 0.5 and now we can see through it. It's black, but we can see through it. You can make it you know, darker or whatever. But what we're going to do is keep the hexadecimal value and then we're going to use the mix blend mode property and set that to overlay. And there we go. So now it, it blends in, it overlays the video and it looks really nice as that, you know, makes it pop. I mean, I think it looks better than this does. And of course, you could change um, change this color if you wanted like black, for instance, you could do that. That looks kind of weird, but I think that that looks good. You can experiment with it. Obviously, if it's a different video, different colors will look you know, uh, better or worse. But yeah, so that gives us the overlay. Now, all we really need to do is position everything and, and size the text. So let's go down to let's go under text and let's do text H2. And I'm going to set that to a font size of five M units. So so an M unit is just a multiplier or basically saying whatever the parent containers font size is, multiply it by five. And we have this nice big H2 here. So we also want the font weight. I'm going to set that to 800 and I'll make it a little more bold. And then let's set the line height to we'll do 1M. Oops. And then let's set the text transform property. I'm going to set that to uppercase because I want it to be all uppercase. All right. And then for the H3, I'm just going to copy this. So the H3 is right underneath. Let's change the font size. We'll make it a little smaller. We'll do 4M and make the weight a little less bold. So 700 line heights the same. That's the same. And there we go. Okay. so the next thing is the paragraph. So let's say text P 
and we'll set the font size of that to 1.1 m make that a little bigger and let's set the margin i want to move it down a little bit so we'll do 20 pixels on the top and bottom and let's also for the font weight we'll do um, let's do 400 for that and let's also set a max width because if it's really wide like this i don't want it to go all the way over so i'm going to set a max width on the paragraph to 700 pixels that way it stays on the side all right so that's it for the paragraph now let's do the explore link which i want to make look like a button so we have um, our text class and then our link inside of it so first of all let's display it as an inline block because a, a link is inline by default and then let's add um, we'll say font size for that will be 1m and let's add a background of white okay and then let's add some padding so for the padding I'll do uh, let's do 10 pixels top and bottom 30 left and right and then let's take away the underline so text decoration is going to be none so if I save that you can see the underline's gone the color is going to be 111 and let's set Let's do a margin top to move it down a little bit. We'll do 10 pixels for that. Uh, I'm going to set text transform to uppercase and let's set um, let's do letter spacing and that's going to be set to 2 pixels, which is going to bring them apart a little bit. And we're going to have a little effect where we hover over it, the letters expand even more. So we'll say text a hover and when that happens we'll set letter spacing to 6 pixels. Okay? Now, if I just hover over, you'll see it just flicks to the 6 pixels. I want a transition, so right here in the text A, let's add a transition and we'll have this happen over 0.2 seconds. So that way it has a, a smoother, you know, transition into the the higher letter spacing. So I think that looks pretty good if we make this bigger. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, so now let's do the social media icons, which right now are over here. Um, so we want to position those absolute. So position absolute. Okay, and then as far as um, you know where we want to put them, we'll say from the bottom we want to go 20 pixels up and place them there. All right, and then let's give it a Z index of 10. Make sure they're always on top. Let's display flex because that's going to align them, you know, horizontal, and we'll justify content to the center and align items to the center. And one problem I just realized, guys, is that for the social links, we didn't actually I didn't put a tags around it. So let's just do this real quick. So we just want to wrap the images in a tags. So we'll just copy that, that there and there, and take that. that. All right. So we just want to make sure that those are wrapped in a tags. Now for the bullet points, let's get rid of those. So social and the list items, we just want to set list style to none. which will get rid of the bullet points. Um, and then we want to add some CSS on the links. So let's say social LIA. And for this, I'm going to display these as an inline block. And I want to invert them from black to white. So we can actually use filter and set that to invert one. And now you can see that they're displayed as white. Um, I also want to move them apart from each other. So let's add a margin right to each one and 20 pixels. And I'm going to scale them down. So we'll use transform with scale. So one is the default. I'm going to set it to 0.5, which will set them down a little bit. Um, and then I'm also going to have an effect where we hover over them. We push them up a little bit and we want to add a transition on that so they don't just flicker up. They actually you know, do it in a, in a smooth way. 
So we'll add a transition of, let's say, 0.5 seconds. And then we'll add the hover effect. So social LIA hover. And we want a transform. We want to keep that scaling, but we also want to add translate y, which just translates or moves it on the y axis. Now, a positive will move it down, a negative will move it up. I want to go up 15 pixels. So now if I hover over these icons, you'll see they'll smoothly go up 15 pixels. And you can mess with that if you want. All right, so I think, I mean, aside from the, the menu and the little bit of JavaScript, I just want to do a little bit of responsiveness here. Um, because if we make this really small, you can see the text is way too big. So we're just going to add a media query here. Let's say at media. And in here, we'll set a max width of let's do 991 pixels. So basically anything under 991 uh, or 991 and under these styles will apply. So I'm going to take the showcase as well as the showcase header and set the padding to 40 pixels all around. I believe we did 4100 originally. Um, and then the text, let's say text H2. We're going to set the font size from I think we did 5M. So we're going to set this to 3M on smaller screens. And then let's do the H3. So text H3. We're going to set the font size I think we did four, so we're going to change that to two on smaller screens. All right, and that's it. So that looks pretty good. Now we just need to do the menu. So basically, um, it, we're going to add a little bit of JavaScript here. I'm going to make the, this a little wider so we can see what's going on. But basically, we want to just click on this button here, and we want to add the class of active to in two places. We want to add it on the showcase itself, like this. And we also want to add it on the toggle like this. Now, if I save that, the toggle already has the X because we already added that style, right? We already added um, not text on the toggle right here. So if it's active, then this applies. Now for the showcase, there's a showcase right here. So for the showcase, let's say showcase class active. If that's active, we actually want to move it over to give the to, to show the menu. So we have it at a, a position. If we look up here, right is set to zero. If it's active, we're going to set it 300 pixels from the right, which is going to be the width of the menu. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like in its active state. Now, before we add the JavaScript, let's let's just style the menu because right now we can't even see it. Um, so we're going to go down to the bottom here, right above the media query. And let's add in menu. All right, so for the menu, uh, we want to position this absolute. And let's set the, we'll say from the top, we want it to be from the top, zero, and then right, zero. Okay, so now we can see it, it's up in the top right corner. And the width of the entire thing is going to be 300 pixels, which is the amount we moved the showcase over. And then we want to set the height to be 100%. And I want to I want it in the middle both ways, vertically and horizontally. So we'll go ahead and use Flexbox, display flex. And then we can align items to the center. That's going to make it center uh, vertically and then justify content. Center will do it horizontally. All right. And then for the let's see the UL menu UL, we're just going to position that relative. And then let's do the UL LI. Actually, we can get rid of the bullet points with the UL. So we'll just say list style none. Get rid of those. And then we want to style the link. So menu, see, menu UL LIA, just to target it better. And then um, I'm going to take away the underline. So text decoration none. And let's make it bigger. So we'll do a font size of 24 pixels. And the color is going to be 111, which is going to be dark. 
And when it's hovered, I want it, I want it to be that blue color, the same as the overlay. So let's say menu UL LI a hover. Then color is going to be actually it just popped up. We want it to be this blue right here. Like that. Now we could actually put the since we're using this color in a couple places, we can use a custom property, which is basically like a variable. Uh, I had do have a, a whole video on custom properties if you want to check it out. But basically you want a, a scope. We're going to use the root scope. So colon root. So we can use these variables anywhere or this variable. And then the way do we define these variables or custom properties is with two hyphens and then whatever we want to call it. I'm going to call it overlay dash color and I'm going to set it to that blue color and then wherever I want to use that. For instance, in the overlay. We can go ahead and just say var. So we need to use the var keyword and then inside here we can use overlay color. All right, and then we can do the same thing down here. So we use var dash dash overlay color. Good. So that should still give us the blue. We still have the overlay. All right. Now, the last thing we need to do is make it so that this functions this this um, toggle button. So I'm going to remove the active classes that we put on here manually and we want to make it happen with JavaScript when we actually click this. All right. Yeah, that's good. We could probably actually make the media query a little. Let's do eight nine one or so, you know what? I'll do my seven nine eight, which is what I usually do. Yeah, that's good. All right. So, uh, yeah, to make this function, even if you're not familiar with JavaScript, this is not a lot at all. This is very easy. So above the the ending body tag, we're going to add in a script tag so that we can put JavaScript in here and we just want to add those two classes of active on those two elements just dynamically. So first thing we want to bring in the toggle and the showcase because that's where we want to put those classes, those the active class. So let's create a variable called menu toggle and we'll set this to document which has uh, a method called query selector so that we can select things from the page from the document object model and we want to select the class of toggle which is this right here. OK, I'm going to copy this down and we also want to get the showcase. So I'm going to give this a variable of showcase, change this to showcase. So now we're bringing those in and we can do stuff with them. So I want to take the menu toggle and I want to add an event listener onto it and listen for a click. And when that happens, we'll run a function. Oops. We'll run a function. Now to shorten this up, we can use an arrow function if we just get rid of that and put an arrow here, which is what I would prefer to do. And here we want to take our menu toggle and we just want to add we want to toggle the class of active, meaning if it's applied, we're going to remove it. If it's not there, we're going to add it. So let's say menu toggle dot and we're going to use class list. Now class list has a bunch of methods on it. You can add a class, remove what we want to do is toggle. And we want to toggle the specific class of active. We want to do the same thing on the showcase. Because remember, they have different behaviors. The showcase is going to move over 300 pixels with active. The menu, this is going to change to the close button on active. OK, those are the two state changes we have. So if I click this now, you'll see it opens. If I click the X, it, it closes. Now, I want it to have a smooth transition and not just flick open and close. So to do that, all we have to do is go up to the uh, toggle. Uh, not the toggle, the showcase. All right, so right here we have showcase. I'm just going to add a transition and let's do 0.5 seconds. That might be too long. Let's see. No, nope, that's good. So now instead of just flicking open, it has a transition. You can make this whatever you want. If you want it to take 1.5 seconds, it's going to open slower. All right. But I think that that's a good speed. All right. And even if it's a small screen like that, still looks good. Cool. So, I mean, 
I think that this looks pretty good if you want to add on to it, if you want to add these inner pages. Um, you know, of course, you could use different video. You could add content down below. I mean, there's a lot you could do with this using this as kind of a boilerplate. All right. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and that's it. I will see you next time.